welcome back to Heiner's Workshop Lessons and Off-Grid Auto Electrics. Today I want to talk to you about how to make solar work for you. We've talked about solar regulators before. There's obviously heaps of different solar panels out there, monocrystalline, polycrystalline and amorph solar panels. There are differences in between them, but in the end it's not going to make a massive difference of what you're going to get out of your solar panel. Uh, we have found that if you want to stay off-grid in the bush for a very long time, if you use solar in the right way, that is basically how to use your solar panels, that is your ticket to free energy. That is what makes sure the only time you have to go back to civilization is when you actually have to stock up on water or on food. But your energy should at least most of the time, just top itself up again through solar panels. The trick is obviously to oversize as much as you can. That is usually limited by the space that you've got available, the money that you've got available, or the weight that you can actually carry. So within those limiting factors, you have to find your optimum. We usually try to oversize by a factor of two. Which means if you do your calculation of your solar panel and you find that a 150 watt solar panel will work well for you and you should get enough energy in theory out of a 150 watt solar panel, get a 300 watt solar panel. That's what we mean by oversizing by a factor of two. Okay. The reason for that is that solar panels are generally tested under lab conditions. So when a solar panel is being tested and it's getting its wattage stem, it is tested in a lab with a certain amount of solar radiation hitting the panel and it's also done at a certain temperature. Usually they, I think always, that's part of the standard, they're testing them at 25 degrees. Now in the real world your panel is usually a lot hotter which makes it less efficient and the solar radiation can vary a lot as well because you still want to charge your battery when it's slightly overcast because even in Australia it's not always a sunny day and you still want to be able to stay out there even if you get a few overcast days in a row. That's why we want to oversize the panels. Now there's two different ways or two different types of solar panels that usually work in a mobile application. There's A, fixed panels, and there's mobile panels. Fixed solar panels are great until you actually go out and camp and you try to park in the shade. Because your fixed solar panels or your roof mount solar panels are usually mounted, hard mounted, to the top of your setup. Which is a brilliant idea if you want to have a fridge constantly running because you can park wherever you want. You don't have to do a lot of driving throughout the day. If you use the right, si right size of solar panel, it will make sure that you recharge your battery every day enough to have your fridge running constantly. The downside of a roof mounted solar panel or fixed solar panel is like I said before, if you camp and you wanna camp in the shade under a few trees or something like that, when you need your panel the most, you get the least use out of it because it will be in the shade. That is mainly true for vehicle setups. So usually we say on a vehicle setup just put enough solar onto the roof that you can sustain your fridge. That is, that is usually the one thing that you want to make sure because if you go out with your overland car and let's say you go onto a boat cruise or a fishing cruise or whatever you might do, you, you park at the harbor and you might stay there out at sea or on an island for three, four, five days maybe, but you still got food in the fridge and you don't want to turn the fridge off and throw everything away. So you park at the harbor, you park in the sun, the solar panel will keep your fridge charged and when you, uh, your fridge running and your battery charged. And when you come back, your food is still going to be okay. Your batteries are full and you can just keep going with your trip probably chuck the fish to the fridge as well while it's already running. Uh, the other case where we want to use a lot of roof solar panels is usually RV setups or large caravans 
camper trailers if possible. Camper trailers can be sometimes really hard to put roof panels on because you have to have a proper roof. You can't have a canvas roof. Uh, but if you have a solid roof, you can use that space for solar panels, which is usually quite a large space. And if you get the right solar panels and you're good at playing Tetris, you can plaster almost the whole roof with solar panels. A lot of times we are able to fit that much solar onto a roof of a caravan or an RV that you can actually run your aircon and at the same time still charge the batteries through the roof solar which I think is quite handy because then it doesn't matter if you park in the sun you actually have enough cooling power and enough solar power coming in so that you can still keep cold and if you don't want to uh, you can park in the shade you can rig up the solar panels on the roof in a series connection so you create a higher voltage if you're unsure what i'm talking about have a look at the lesson before where we talked about chargers there's an example for how to put solar panels in series but be careful when you do that if you put too many of them in series you create a higher voltage higher voltage and it can get to the point where it's actually quite dangerous so please make sure you know what you're doing before you do it uh, and that way you can stay off grid with your caravan quite easily uh, the other type of solar panels that we use a lot are mobile solar panels these panels are great in overlanding setups for example when you mainly park in the shade you've got the small roof solar panel that we talked about before but now you're at camp your solar panel on the roof might even be on a roof tent so once the roof tent is up the angle is terrible of the solar panel uh, so you can have either folding solar panels with an aluminium frame around them they have got their pluses and also their, their downsides to them the good thing about them is they're quite sturdy and you can also angle them towards the sun but the downside is they're quite heavy and they're hard to pack away because they're still quite bulky and it's always hard to find a good spot for them uh, but like i said on the plus side you can angle them towards the sun uh, the other solar panel that you can use for that application is a solar blanket or some people say a solar mat good thing about those is they're usually quite lightweight and they fold together quite small so very easy to store uh, but they're quite hard to set on an angle uh, but the good thing is if you oversize them enough you can just put them on the floor you can pack them down in the corners in case it's windy and you can just leave them there you never have to look after them they're just there and then you pack them back up when you leave obviously just in case you want a bit more information like always i've prepared a pdf that is downloadable please have a look at the link below click on it it will get you to our website perth pro and you'll find a video section find the video in there and there's a download section for this pdf it's got all that information on there as well also for mobile panels the one big difference in between folding panels and solar blankets is obviously the price folding solar panels are relatively cheap while solar blankets are still quite expensive so it's up to you whatever suits your budget and the way that you're camping the space that you've got available for the panels I think that would probably help you decide what is right for you just please remember the factor two rule you want to oversize the panels by a factor of two it means if you know the size that you need double it and that will actually work quite well in the real world the next topic that is really important and I see that being done wrong almost on every camping trip that I go to is the panel orientation like I said before you can actually put panels on an angle and there is an optimum angle which is called the azimuth azimuth I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that in English uh, which means depends on where you are in this world the angle of the panel the optimum angle of the panel towards the sun changes a little bit ideally you have the panel perfectly perpendicular towards the sun that way you get the most out of your solar panel but not to lose production throughout that you also have to angle your panel either a perfectly north 
or move it throughout the day with the sun. If you don't do that and you, let's say, you set up your panel and it's facing west and you leave it like that all the time, you'd be a lot better off to just put the panel flat on the floor because that way you can still capture a lot more sun than actually angling it away from the sun. So in my personal experience, I found that if you use the oversized by a factor of two rule for a mobile panel, the easiest way to use it in the end so that you don't have to think about where's north, how do I have to set up the panel, just lie it flat on the ground. And uh, this rule applies even more for roof solar panels. I've seen a lot of people mounting roof solar panels on an angle on their roof. Unless you're always parking facing north, you'd be a lot better off just putting the panel flat onto the roof because most times you won't be able to park facing north. It might be because you want to create a wind windbreak with your car or the view is in a different direction or you have to have your car level wherever you park and because of that you can't have it facing perfectly north. So especially roof solar panels, you're generally a lot better off just mounting them flat instead of setting them on an angle. And another thing that I've seen quite often is people using solar blankets or solar mats and just hanging them off the side of their car. If you do that, you probably lose about 80% production because remember there's this perfect angle towards the sun and you want to have the sun pretty much perpendicular towards the solar mat. Uh, if you just hang it off the side of your car and your sun is somewhere up here, for example, I've got this panel here to show you. If the sun sits somewhere up here and you've got the solar panel like that, the area that is actually being hit by solar rays, by the sun rays, is a lot smaller than if you had the panel like that or if you had the panel like that. Obviously flat is not ideal, but it is the closest to ideal that is also very easy to achieve. I hope that makes sense in that way. So as a recap, the easiest way to use your mobile solar panels is no matter if they're on your roof or if they're mobile panels, if you just want to have it quick and easy, oversized by a factor of two and put them flat on the ground, on the roof, wherever you use them. One more thing that we haven't talked about yet, which is also really important uh, to state, is what heat does to solar panels. Uh, like I said before, solar panels are usually tested and the stats that you get about the solar panels, the technical details, they are all measured at 25 degrees. Now, if you put a solar panel out in the real world and it is in the beating sun in summer, they quite easily get up to 80 degrees or even more. And with every degree temperature increase, the output voltage will drop down a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more. This, in an extreme case, can lead to the output voltage of the solar panel dropping down so far that your MPPT charge regulator cannot go into a boost charge mode anymore. So when you buy solar panels, please have a look at the maximum power point voltage of the panel. For an automotive panel that is of good quality, that should be somewhere in between 18 and 19 volt. Inferior quality panels will have something around 15, 16 volt maximum power point voltage. Stay way clear of those panels because in the middle of summer when it's really hot, the output voltage will drop below the lowest cutoff for your maximum power point tracker, solar charge regulator, and you will stay in float charge mode all the time instead of going into boost charge mode. Or if you have those panels and you want to get around this problem, instead of connecting the panels in parallel, you can connect them in series. That way you double the voltage of the panel and you can get around this problem as well. I think if you stick to all these rules with your solar panels, just so that you know how you use the solar panels, how best to apply the solar panels, mobile or on your roof, uh, sorry, I mean on the ground, or on the roof, mobile panels or fixed panels. If you stick to these simple rules, you should be able to charge 
your whole setup through solar throughout most days of the year. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and if you enjoy these videos, please make sure you do like and subscribe down below here. And I'll see you for the next video where we're actually going to be talking about the most overlooked topic in vehicle builds, and that is power distribution. Thank you very much. On the Perth Pro website, you can click onto blog slash videos. You will find all our videos that we do for ready to drive anywhere. And here you will also find the links for the downloadable PDFs.